Spring is a great time to get out and enjoy creation and start to build up the habitat on your hunting properties. Now, there are many great habitat management projects that we can tackle in the spring. Today I want to take some time and highlight five habitat management projects that you can implement on your properties this spring so that you can build up the habitat on your property to have better hunting in the fall. One of my main habitat management projects in the spring is planting trees. I think for the last probably seven years or so, I've planted at least a thousand trees every spring. Normally it's more like 2,000 trees. This year I have 6,000 trees going in because I'm always working to build up the cover on our property. And my main go-to is conifers, in particular spruce. So the reason that I like to plant spruce and conifers is because I'm always working to build up the thermal cover and thermal protection on our property. Our properties in the upper Midwest in Minnesota and the deer here need that good thermal cover in the winter in order to get out of the winter elements. In areas like this where we add conifers you can see we got tons of these very very well-worn deer trails that kind of work their way throughout here. Now this is the perfect mix of conifers and woody regen here. You can see I got ample woody regen. We got some conifers that were planted 20 years ago and then we've added some additional conifers throughout here just to add a little bit more thermal protection to this area. So this will be a bedding area and we've added the conifers or the spruce trees here to enhance this bedding area. So in the areas that are a little bit thicker like this, this is where we'll find the beds throughout the late fall into the winter once that snow starts flying because we got that thermal protection from the winter elements. Now ideally, we'd either trim some of these up or we'd have some pines going through here where the deer can even tuck up underneath the, uh, the branches so that they have protection from above and then they also have the protection from the wind in their face with the spruce trees. But I like conifers because we do have high deer density here. Well, I should say mid to high deer density. So if we plant anything that isn't a spruce, um, the deer will browse it. We've even done the white pine. We've got them to go in the past. This year, the white pine I planted last year got smoked by the deer. So I really have to be selective with what we plant out here. But if you got higher deer numbers, spruce are generally a safe bet. It's pretty rare I hear guys saying that deer are browsing on their spruce. Spruce also make a great screen for access, for bedding areas, for food plots. You can look, they hold their branches all the way to the bottom. So they're a phenomenal per minute screen. So this is another good time to get your rows planted and get those screens set. One other application for spruce is that you can add them to your bedding cuts. You can see behind me, there's been a whole lot of chainsaw work going on in this area. And I got a spruce right here to add a little bit of thermal, a little bit of a thermal component to this area and also add some diversity to this bedding cut. And here is a must have when it comes to tree planting. That is a dibble bar. It is inexpensive. I will put a link to that in the description. Get them off Amazon. But these are great because, yes, sometimes you can row plant trees. You can see that I've done that using a tree planter. But the dibble bar, you can plant trees anywhere. So you want this just so you have that versatility. And you can plant, I can plant two to three trees a minute with that thing. I will take a video at the end of this video to show how to use the dibble bar. So if you are planting woody species, deciduous trees, you're gonna have to protect them. Now, some of my go-to's when it comes to just woody species, I guess in general, would be American plum, gray dogwood, nanny berry, elderberry to some degree, red osier dogwood. These are all really good deer species. But just know they're very desirable to deer so if you're going to go that route I've tried the numbers game if you got any kind of deer density at all it just does not work so make sure that you tube and protect them or cage them if you uh, if you are planting species that are not deer resistant like spruce so another great project for the spring is to get out and frost seed your switchgrass you can see I got a beautiful stretch of switchgrass right there 
And right next to it here, I got this bean stubble. And this will be getting planted in switchgrass this year. That's the key right there, the prep. There are not weeds in this. See all those nice cracks and things like that? It's setting up perfect for frost seeding for that seed to drop into. And that ground is relatively weed free. So I should not have to worry about my switchgrass getting choked out by weeds. The key to switchgrass success is making sure that you do the proper prep. We need a very, very clean seed bed to frost seed into. I like to frost seed my switchgrass basically as soon as the snow melts. So I'm gonna be a little bit late on it this year, but it'll still do just fine. We're still, it's mid-March right now, so plenty of freezing and thawing days for that seed to stratify. Um, and I am planting the RC Big Rock this year, which is a new and improved variety of switchgrass. So generally that's a lower dormancy switchgrass, so I don't have to worry as much about having the stratification to break dormancy. But I still like to frost seed so that I can ensure that all the seed will germinate year one. So I use switchgrass for screening primarily, but I do have lots of pockets of switchgrass as well that do set up for bedding. So this particular piece of switchgrass right here is primarily a screen from our axis. That's why this is getting planted into switchgrass because this did not work well with our axis. We always had the food here. It's just one of these things we've had to do for a while and we hadn't done it, is get rid of this food to clean up our axis a little bit. Um, but we will be adding the switch grass in here to screen off the main food plot right there and also to enhance the bedding that is back in there. So this big chunk of switch, or this big field, it's about a quarter acre, is gonna be all switch grass and the primary reason for that is because I want to set it up as a screen. Now there's just another screening application when it comes to switchgrass. You can see on this one I tip trees right out into the switchgrass just to double down on the screening here. It works phenomenal to screen off the bedding that's right back there. Now another spring project that involves frost seeding is frost seeding clover. Uh, I like to frost seed my clover after snow melt when we still have a good handful of those freezing thawing days. Um, normally in Minnesota, my frost seeding window seems to hit more early April, uh, this year with no snow and it being mid-March right now and I'm walking around in a t-shirt, uh, I think I'll be good to roll right now. We actually are going to jump back into cooler temps next week, um, so I'll, I'll get my frost seeding done probably this weekend. Uh, but frost seeding is a really, really good way to establish clover, um, I, as long as you do Good prep work in the area that you're going to frost seed. Again, just kind of like switchgrass. Make sure it's weed free and ready to roll. Um, it's a really easy way to get clover going. So here was another application for clover. It's all brown and dead. That's why I don't love clover as a late season food source, but really good early season. But anyway, what this was was a fire break. That goes all the way around the switchgrass. I put this in initially in case I ever wanted to burn the switch. Now I'm not going to because I'm going to add a ton of trees and things like that out there. So this, this switch will just be what it is and diversity will fill in, which is a good thing. I like that. But what I'll do with this fire break is I like having this food next to the switch. I'll come in here and I will frost seed into this at about a half rate. So and you can do that with existing clover plots. You can keep a clover plot going indefinitely um, by just coming in and adding a little bit more seed every spring. So I'll just come walk all the way up and down this fire break here and I'll frost seed into it at about a half rate and it'll be good to go for another year. Now here's one of my favorite projects to do when just trying to transform habitat and that's killing cool season grass. Now check this area out. This is on our farm and I've been tackling the cool season grass but clearly I haven't got it all because look at this this is just a mat of cool season grass here so what's the, what this is doing it's brome and fescue which is non-native garbage but what this is doing is it's completely suppressing any chance for the native habitat to thrive now I got some trees and stuff that are popping out here but this area has been fallow for 24 years 23 years 24 years Clearly it's still doing virtually nothing in regards to habitat. So attacking this cool season grass is a great way to transform this 
worthless habitat. So when I'm spraying this, I'm going to hit it with clethodim and crop oil. So clethodim is a grass-specific herbicide um, that will just target the grasses, but it will kill the cool season grass. And then what I do after that is I follow it up with fire. So I'm going to burn it. Now you can go about it two different ways. You can spray it first and then burn it. About I normally burn two to four weeks after I spray. Or you can burn it first, let the grass come, and then spray it. Either one works well, but I like to release these areas with fire. It just gets that native seed bed popping a lot faster. Now, if you're not comfortable with fire, you don't have to burn. I have plenty of areas on the farm that I've never burned. I'm just killing the grass in. But if you are comfortable with fire, it just kind of expedites that process. And the last one is another application for burning, and that's burning your switchgrass. Now I've talked in other videos, I don't necessarily burn all my switchgrass. I actually don't plan to burn this stand of switchgrass again. Um, but switchgrass does love fire. Uh, I burn my screens to keep them healthy and vibrant. Um, if I have areas that I don't plan on adding in trees or things like that with my switchgrass, I'd burn those areas. But this area, I'm planting a bunch of trees out here. I'm going to scatter trees throughout all this switchgrass. So I'm not going to burn it, obviously, because what that's going to end up doing is killing my trees. But if you have screens or you have areas that are bedding deer and you don't necessarily have a lot of uh, woody growth in there, you can certainly burn your switchgrass and the switchgrass will love it. Also, if you had a poor take on your switchgrass, using fire to release that switchgrass is a very, very good method uh, to recovering a poor stand of switchgrass. Now, I wouldn't do that until after the second growing season. But I shot a video on this one where this switchgrass looked terrible after the second growing season. And what I did is burnt it to the following spring. So year three in the spring, I burnt this. And you can see it just absolutely exploded when really before it was just a patch of switch here, patch of switch there. And it just looked awful and the biggest reason was because of a drought but i knew the switch was there i looked around and i could see switchgrass that was six inches tall it just did not grow we had an awful awful drought and uh also just some poor weed control on my part but it absolutely took off so fire is a great way to release a poor stand of switchgrass wait until after year two we want to give that two growing seasons to see what we got if it still looks poor after year two hit it with fire but do not give up on your switchgrass too soon that is the biggest mistake people make with switchgrass so if you get a chance get out and enjoy creation this spring get some habitat on the ground all right y'all take care god bless